In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Wi Files for HTML powered graph visualization web app from scratch using nothing but Wi Files for HTML. So, I expect you to have already uh, downloaded and installed the Wi Files for HTML package, um, for example, the evaluation version. So, if you followed the README HTML and the steps described in there and executed one of the shell scripts um, or the instructions in package JSON, you will have the lib minus dev folder uh, and within it is the ES modules folder and there is this Y files um, TGZ file which is a, a an archive file, the NPM packed version of Y files. And we're going to use that version in this example because it's the easiest one to work with and we recommend everyone to use this because IDEs like Visual Studio Code and all the JetBrains tool and all of the JavaScript tool chains actually today work best with NPM packed modules. Mm. Specifically in this example I'm going to use um, Webpack 5 but any tool chain that can work with NPM modules works great. So you can just as well use your React CLI or Vue CLI or Angular whenever you can do an NPM install and create a web application um, you can integrate Wifehouse. So let's get started. I'm starting with an empty directory here and what I do is in order to use NPM I'm going to use npm init minus yes so get all the defaults in here and we are not going to have a main file and I'm going to make this private first just to be sure and um, what I'm going to do now is install Webpack as the CLI and the dev server. So this allows me to do uh, to watch my sources and bundle the files, the NPM files, in a way that my browser uh, can easily show them. Um, so this is a really basic setup um, and I'm sure you will be using a more elaborate one in the end, but um, just to show you the basics. So we're also going to um, use a script. Um, let's add this. Um, we want to watch our files um, so that we can just hit save um, and then it will go and recompile. So, but it needs something to recompile, of course. So let's add an index.html file and let's just put some uh, a minimal set up in there. So this is just a title and it's loading a main.js file which is the default output of webpack5. So let's add this source slash index which is the default input for webpack but anything will work. So let's just add an alert in here to see if that works. Hello and um, now let's um, go that and open that in our browser index HTML. Now first of course we need to compile it, run the run the npm task and we'll make it watch. And now it compiled and now again let's open that in the terminal and do index. Now this starts um, the dev version and it says hello. So um, Let's check if the recompile works. Uh, reload, and here we go. Okay. So now that we have the basic Webpack set up, up and running, let's add some graphing functionality to it. First, uh, we go back to our evaluation package, and we're going to lib minus dev es modules, and we are going to remember or copy the path to our npm module bundle. Let's copy that path. And then we're going back to our, um, to our terminal and we're going to do an npm install save of Wi-Files for HTML. So this is now adding Wi-Files for HTML as a node module to our application. And this means that um, Webpack will be able to let me import that and bundle that as the application. And also it adds um, 
code completion functionality to Visual Studio Code. Um, so let's check that out. I can now do import from Y files and I get proper code completion. Let's search for the most important component, which is the graph component. So um, I can now do new graph component and have Webpack resolve that functionality for me and load that into my application. Now, this is um, this won't do anything. So if I run this, I won't get to see anything because of two reasons. First, I need to reserve some space on the HTML page where I want my graph component to be rendered in. So I'm adding a div and in order to be able to identify it, I'm giving it an ID, but any technique will work. You just need to be able to um, get an access to that div element in the JavaScript later. And we're also assigning it some style. So let's give it a color so that we can see it and also assign a size to it. This is very important because by default, the Y files graph component doesn't have any size, meaning that if you omit this uh, setting, you won't see anything because the size is zero. This is so that uh, um, the component will work with all of the various frameworks out there. You can use CSS animations and so on without our default size interfering. Um, so now that we have the graph component specified and part of the DOM, we can uh, use this information and pass this as to one of the constructor overloads to the graph component. And the first one is where we actually specify the CSS selector uh, where the graph component um, should be uh, rendered into the HTML page. Now this is almost working. There's one thing uh, we need to do, and that is to uh, add the licensing information. Um, so Y files has this license object, and uh, before doing anything else in the code, I need to assign the value property of the license object and then add the JSON object in here. Um, there's two ways you can do this. Uh, you could just go and open that file and copy copy the license file contents and paste them in here. But since I'm using Webpack here, I'm going to just open libdev, copy that and add this to my source folder. And now I can just um, import the JSON value from uh, the file. So I give it a name. Uh, from dot slash license dot json and then I'm assigning this over here. So with these changes in place, um, I will now assign the value to the license and tell uh, Y files to instantiate a graph component in the div in my index HTML in this location with a size of 500 and 500 pixels. So let's see whether that worked. You reload the file, and this is the graph component. Very uh, unoverwhelming yet, but as you can see from the scroll browser, there's already some functionality in there. So let's just see that this actually worked. We're going to uh, use the remember the the variable that we just remembered, and use this to access the graph property, and we're going to create a node in there. And once we do that, and uh, the graph will be seen immediately in the application. So let's reload it. And after Webpack has finally finished its compilation, which takes a while in my case, now it's done, uh, we see the node in here. Um, we can't edit it yet, so let's um, also specify an input mode um, so that we want to, so that we can edit the graph. So we are adding a graph editor input mode in here, and this allows us to use our mouse to actually work with the graph. Um, let's wait for our Webpack to recompile and. Once it's done, it's probably because I'm using, ah, okay, I'm using the 
production mode, which optimizes the bundle, and this takes a while, so um, I should have been using a configuration where I'm using development mode, which is a lot faster for this. But let's just hope for it to have finished already. Um, now I can create elements interactively, move, move them around, resize them, and so on. And this is how you create an application with Wi-Fi for HTML from scratch via NPM modules, and in this case, Webpack 5. Thank you.